Welcome to another episode of Only Comics. I'm Mike, and this is Adrian. Good morning. Good morning. What's up, good dude? Good morning, man. Uh, I'm 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 actually out in the woods, dude. I I'm 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 hoping this this episode goes well. You know, I'm working only on Wi-Fi. There's no cell service. I'm I'm about 30 minutes out from anything that would even be considered a town, but it's nice. It's a beautiful day. A little chilly. It's about 30 out here. Uh, but outside of that. Dude, it's, it's like you got caught up in the multiverse, dude. You got off at the wrong spot or something. You, you know, you're supposed to be here in the studio and you're out in the woods right. somewhere. But we're we're hey. going to bring you back at some point. That's right. That's right. Yep. But um, all jokes aside, this is, this is our New Year edition. So happy New Year, everyone. We appreciate y'all bringing in the New Year with us here on Only Comics. Um, and, you know, like Adrian pointed out, he's, he's a little remote. So bear with us this week. But uh, we're going to get through this because it's what we do, Adrian. You know, whatever they throw at us, we just, you know, we, we keep rolling with the punches here on Only Comics. So if, if right. this is your first time with us, buckle up. Um, we've been accused of having hot takes on here, Adrian. That's That's been an accusation that they've made. Um, mm-hmm. One thing I can tell you, though, you're going to be in for a hell of a ride because we take a ride down this multiverse of the comic book world week in and week out. Right. So here we are. Another week. Uh, so let, let's hop right into this. dude. All right. We got so we like to kick off our show with our um, news segment. So I, I got some news articles this week, Adrian. There's a lot going on in the comic book world. OK, um, for starters. So Marvel. They're creating a, or they did create a new MCU superhero for the What If series. Um, Now, this is something that you and I have talked a lot about here, right? There's tons Mm -hmm. of characters in the comic books already. um, And Marvel's creating this character. Now, it's a Native American warrior, which I think is cool. Kahori, Mm -hmm. brand new MCU original superhero. And um, okay. they, they casted some actress to play uh, or to voice her in the What If series. And I guess this actress is also playing a separate character in the Echo show. Um, but long story short, do they create a new character just for the MCU? And honestly, I'm not a fan of this. I, I just, and not because I don't want to see the representation. It's more about like you do a segment on this show called Hidden Gem. And there's plenty of hidden gems already in the comic book world that y'all can pull from. You don't need to create new characters just for a screen. So for me, this I'm not a big fan when they do stuff like this. What about you, Adrian? Um, I this is this is really no news for me. I I, I definitely agree. You know, I'm doing research and stuff now, and it's like there's so many characters out there. You know, there's there's so many existing characters that they can pull from that they don't need to create a whole new subset or a whole new character to fit a particular thing. I mean, what are they trying to do with this person? They already have a Native American. They already have many Native American, um, uh, you know, superhero characters and, and other characters within, within the comics right. uh, for representation. So what what is actually their goal? I'm more interested in the goal behind this um, as opposed to the character itself. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, be one thing if they're creating a character that's not already represented in the comics, that would make sense. But mm-hmm. you know, and, and maybe they just need to watch our show a little more and check right. out, you know, the hidden gems. I mean, that, that's right. prob that's probably the issue right here. You know, if I had if I had to pinpoint <laughs> it, that's probably the issue. Um, right. So in, in other news, the Batman too. Now you know, I'm 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 probably as big of a fan of the Batman as you are Black Adam. Is that okay. would you would, would you agree with that? Mm-hmm. Or maybe no, I would say you're as big of a Batman fan as I am probably an Iron Man fan. Okay. I I, mean, I, I like the Black Adam, but I mean he's recently on the scene. Yeah. Iron Man's been for me, Iron Man's been around since I was a kid, so got it. I'm I'm talking just the movie. So the Batman, the gotcha. one with Robert Pattinson. Okay. I love gotcha. that movie, right? That's I probably like that more than most fans. 
Um, but there's okay. some Batman two news. So we we actually reported a rumor. I don't know, a few few weeks ago, a few months ago. I don't. You know, time works differently here on Only Comics. I don't know. It's like <laughs> this is episode thirty seven. I feel like we've been doing it for five years, but I don't know. Um, right. But anyways, we had reported that um, in the Batman two, the uh, room one of the rumored villains was Clayface. Right. So um, James Gunn he he shot down some of these Batman two rumors. So. Um, the, the rumor that Clayface, the rumor that Professor Pig um, and Scarecrow were going to be in the Batman sequel as main villains, he put, as they say, a kibosh to that, Adrian. Um, okay. So that is not the case. Now, when we first heard that, I think we both kind of thought it'd be interesting to see those you know, characters. On, no, I think Professor Pig would be cool. I think that would fit this whole serial killer kind of detective Batman Clayface was one though that I'm like that one's interesting to see how they pull that off on screen. So I, I'm actually hearing this news. I'm I'm probably in favor of not having Clayface in in the you know sequel. Right. But how, how about you? After hearing this and hearing the rumors, do you, do you think this is a good thing? Yeah, um, I, I think they need to get away from um, all the the CGI and and mm. you know uh, any, anything that that's beyond just a, a basic human character portraying a bad guy or a super guy. Um, I've seen so many movies, especially over the holidays, because you know I like to go way back on my Christmas stuff. Oh, yeah. Right? So, um, you know, you, you, you see movies uh, from over the holidays, and they were very well done without a bunch of, you know, mm. artificial stuff, CGI stuff, and it would really be hard to pull off uh, a person. You know, not that they can't do it, but just to have it, I mean, I'm imagining like, you know, when the, when that would they did the first Hulk. Yeah. <laughs> that was atrocious. Um, so I I'm 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 thinking about something like that. So yeah, I'm not in favor of, of the clay face. Yeah, bring back Professor Pig. You know, anything that's like a because there's also a lot of like you have um um Kingpin. Yeah. He's a he's a he's a very good character and he plays it well, uh the you know, for for Reno or whatever his name is, right? Yeah. So you bring back people like that. You don't need all these supers per se. Correct. Yeah, no, I'm I'm in favor of the more grounded. I mean, I think that's you know for me what what I really enjoyed or one of the aspects I really enjoyed of that Batman movie is the fact that it is a lot more grounded. I mean, the right. Riddler is just some crazy dude killing people. Like <laughs> he ain't super powered. He's not you know he's not supernatural. He's just a dude that right. gets a following on on social media. And, you know, attacks the the establishment or, for you know, stands up for what he thinks. But at the end of the day, he's just a dude. You know, he's not a right. physical threat to Batman at all, um, you know, mm -hmm. more psychological. So, yeah, I'm in favor of them not doing that. Um, next up, dude, so Aquaman. Aquaman, did, mm -hmm. you, did you even know Aquaman 2 came out? <laughs> um, I, I did, but... The only attention I paid to it really was, you know, as you're driving by the movie theaters, yeah, you see the you see it on the billboard, Aquaman two. Yep. It's like I'm not itching to go see it, you know, uh, nothing like that. So I'll, I'll wait for it to come out on Netflix or yeah. Tubi even. Absolutely, dude. This is a first for us though, right? Like I, since we've been doing the show, I don't think there's been a movie that we've not went out. Like we actually went out to watch the right. Flash. That's some shit, right. bro. We went out right. to watch the Flash, but Aquaman two, like neither one of us even brought it up. <laughs> <laughs> exactly, exactly. It it'll be gone before we even, you know, if you hadn't brought it up, I wouldn't have thought about it anymore. Actually. Exactly, dude. My and, my and son I, and, I, and, and I and I liked Aquaman uh the first one. Yeah, you enjoy the first one. I've I've still yeah. not seen the first one. Um okay. my son went to see Aquaman <laughs> too, but more because like he went with a girl and that was the movie they agreed. You know, I mean how that is, but right, right, anyways, right. he was like, Yeah, it was really funny. Um, but yeah, I got no interest, but you know, it, I, I made a statement a few weeks ago about the whole box office and how I thought it would flop. And mm -hmm. so the budget, I, I, I know what the budget was, but I did read that in order for Aquaman two to break even, they'd have to pull in about 400 million. Okay. okay. So they're at 138 million right now after a few weeks, which if, I mean, the, the movies, they do the bulk of their, you know, numbers in the first few weeks. So it's not doing so well at the box office. Um, and actually, the Marvels, Marvels did a little over two hundred million at the box office, so it's not even at the Marvels numbers yet. So it is not wow. doing well. So just like you and I, Adrian, there's a lot of people out there that also don't know the movie came out, so or they don't care about seeing it, one or the other, or they don't, or they don't care. Yeah, I'm gonna, <laughs> I'm gonna probably go with that one. <laughs> You're right. Last piece of news this week, Adrian. So we have. Um, 
Captain America: Brave New World is a movie that is mm-hmm. in the works. We've we've heard this movie that's gone through title changes. Um, you know, this is the one where Harrison Ford is is going to play um, my man Thunderbolt Ross, right? Um, right. Anthony Mackie, Possib- possibly Red Hulk, possibly Red Hulk, dude. I'm I'm thinking that's actually where this rumor's going, Red Hulk. Mm-hmm. Um, and then Anthony Mackie, who I- I'm still not sold yet on him as Cap. Um, now, let me ask you this, dude. You, you've seen the Captain America show, right? The well, the Winter Soldier, whatever it's called. Yep. Um, yep. <laughs> that do you think it cheapens the fact that you know Anthony Mackie's taking over this role of Cap, right? But we saw this mm-hmm. happen. We saw this transformation happen on a show versus a movie. Do you think that that cheapens that? You know him taking over the shield and whatnot. Like, would that have had a more of an impact if it happened in a movie? In your opinion, I think. Um, the Falcon, and and I am, despite I, there should not be a black Captain America. Let's start. Let's let's clear that out. Clear that out. Okay. There shouldn't be a black Captain America. All right. There's there's other variants. Um, that that a black male can play. Right. Um, but what cheapens the whole thing? It doesn't matter if it was on a show or a movie. Right. What cheapens it is that they try to do. They're trying to do this hybrid Falcon Captain mm. America thing. Captain America is too strong of a character on its on his own to be a be thrown in a blender with a bird. You know what I'm saying? Right, I right. you he's it's like if you take Batman and you know mix him up with uh, I the the Riddler or something. Mm-hmm. I mean it just it, it's insane. It's insane. I I think them trying to put these two um characters in one uniform cheapens the whole Captain America thing. It, it's it's almost like I mean it does nothing for the Falcon. Right. I mean the Falcon was like, you know, the 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 Robin of, you know, the whole crew. <clears throat> um but I, I definitely think it, it cheapens the Captain America brand by trying to put these two together. Doesn't matter what the platform what platform it came out on. Gotcha. Gotcha. It, it, now would you have been a favor or in favor of keeping Falcon the character, but having the Falcon character move into more of this leadership role within the Avengers versus him just turning into this high. Cause, cause I, what you're saying, I mean, he, he has the cap colors. He's got the shield, but mm-hmm. my man still got Falcon wings flying around. Like he's the Falcon. Like it's like, which, which one do you want to be? Right. Exactly. So w- would you have been like, do you think it would have kind of came across better if they just made this Falcon character more of like take over the, that void that is now left with Cap gone, but not the Cap mm-hmm. moniker, if that makes sense. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, in other words, Falcon step up. Yep. You know, make the Falcon make the Falcon step up, as opposed to they could have just retired the shield. They could even brought out another Cap later on. Yeah. You know, you know they they had this way of reaching back and finding these other super soldier serum enhanced mm-hmm. people. Um, or uh, even a mutant. I mean, whatever. You know, just retire the cap shield for the time being. You know, right. Steve Rogers made a bold move. He went back. He wanted to be with his girl. He did all that stuff. So he came back 900 years old. Yep. So, so obviously he put some thought into it. You know, they they needed they needed to have put some thought into their next move. Retire the shield. Step step uh, the Falcon up, and that would have been the best thing I think. Yeah. Um. Just like don't bring back. Uh, Downey as Iron Man as right. Tony Stark. Yep, yep, I'm with you. Well, the rumor, Adrian, you're probably not going to like this. The rumor is that that Captain America movie is going to end with a big fight scene between Anthony Mackie's Cap and none other than yours, um, yours truly, Harrison Ford, dude, as the Red Hulk. That's the rumor. So the rumor is we're going to see Red Hulk versus Cap on screen in this movie. Um. I, you know, I hate to, to jump the gun and, and, and be that, as they call it, Adrian, a Debbie Downer. You know, you've heard mm-hmm. that before, right? I don't want to be a Debbie Downer here for everyone. But I'm I'm not that excited about this news. Now, Marvel can surprise us, right? They, they've pulled some right. shit off before where you're like, wow, I'm surprised. You know, this character, like, I mean, even going back to the Iron Man first movie, they took a, a B-level character and made him, you know, a uh, uh, household name, right? So I'm not right. going to count them out completely, but... Hearing that news doesn't excite me. The cat mm-hmm. versus Red Hulk. What about you? Um. So first of all, 
Uh, how can I put this? All right. So, um, there, there shouldn't be a <clears throat> Falcon isn't cap. He's not soldier serum enhanced. He's just a dude in a suit. Right. So he has no powers per se. You know, he's got some tricks up his sleeve, you know, things like that. Right. So, so he has no physical in- enhancements of his own. Um, number one, number two, he doesn't have the experience of cap, right? Right. Cap has what fifty something years, you know, back in war in the war. Then he came up, and you know, the, the the level of people that Cap fought were wholly different than the level of of people that the Falcon fought, mm-hmm. right? So, no serum, don't have the experience um, as as a fighting person, and then he doesn't have the experience with the shield itself. I think unless they pull some kind of you know, Tom foolery, Tom trickery, mm. um. Uh, I this would be a slaughter. Yeah, you know, um, they obviously they're going to have to figure out some kind of way to save this, you know, Falcon Captain hybrid uh, <laughs> from the Red Hulk. But I I just don't see it, and I don't like it. Yeah, well, he's Falcon America. There you go. We'll just call him that. <laughs> he's Falcon go, America. Falcon America. <laughs> the uh, the other rumor was um so. We discussed the, you know, Jonathan Majors, Kang situation. He's now dropped, mm-hmm. and you and I kind of, you know, talked about the whole idea of do they recast Kang or do they move on? And we both fell in the boat of let's just move on. There's plenty of other villains. You know, Kang ain't that cool right. anyways. Like, he could be cool on screen, but if we – it's mm-hmm. how, you know, it's almost like Thanos. Thanos was cool when the MCU made him cool, right? Like, right. if we exactly. never was introduced to Thanos and maybe Norman Osborn was the main villain of the first, and like, it, we wouldn't have, have missed out, right? Like, and I'm not, exactly. I mean, Josh Brolin did a great job bringing that character to life, but my point is, um, the kind of the theme of the MCU, for the most part, has been taking these obscure characters, um, or maybe not, but not, not, maybe not obscure, but not the fan favorite characters and making them really popular, right? They didn't lead with, right. you know, um, Spider Man and Wolverine. It was mm-hmm. Iron Man, Cap, Thor, you know, Loki characters right. that, you know, w- were always maybe someone's second choice, right? Um, mm-hmm. So the, the, the new rumor for Secret Wars is that the Beyonder is going to be the main villain, who, I, um, from what I've read about him, is also a Kang variant. But the, the point here is it allows them to recast. So it, it, if this rumor is true, it sounds like they're recasting Kang um, or recasting Jonathan Major's character and that Beyonder is going to be the main villain. Um, I, I'm Again, this one, not to be another Debbie Downer here, but I, I'm not feeling this one either, dude. I think they just move away from Kang and, and call it a day, man. What about you? Any, first of all, do you even know who the Beyonder Have you ever heard of this character? I have. Um, he's one of those Omega level. He's he's really like a extraterrestrial. He, okay. He's like <clears throat> object manipulation. I mean, he's he's up there. Yeah. Um. So I've heard of him. I didn't really follow him. Um. But again, I agree. Let's move away from Kang. You could throw anybody in there. Mm-hmm. I, I think they're. I think they're sitting on. Um. Not sitting on. That makes it sound like they're trying to pull a surprise. But I think they kind of um making a mistake if they're not if they aren't trying to prop up like Victor Von Doom yeah. as, as a major villain um, because he's, he's, you know, earthbound. He has powers that he's evolved through um, magic and technology, uh, but he's not something, some, something doom is somebody that people can think about in their head. You know, mm-hmm. he's not so big like a Galactus um, that people can't wrap their mind around him. And I think he would make an excellent villain um, in, a, in a, not a replacement because he's not a replacement for Kane. Right. Uh, but he would make a very good adversary for anybody. Yeah. And I, I think they should focus more, pivot more on people like him as opposed to these. Because again, nobody's ever heard of, Beyond, of the Beyonder. Right. Yeah, and Doom is someone who we've heard of. It's kind of like, like you know, talking about the Iron Man. So we all heard of Iron Man, but wasn't yeah. anyone's favorite. Maybe you know, not everyone knew everything about the guy. Um, and mm-hmm. I think that's kind of the deal with Doom, right? I mean, they tried to bring Doom on screen in the past. I think, I think most casual comic fans recognize the name Doom, whether they know a whole lot about the character or not. But you're right, the Beyonder right. dude. Ask a hundred comic fans who the Beyonder is, and like, who the hell are you talking about? Um, right. So yeah, I'm I'm not I'm not feeling that. I, I I agree. I think they should move away from Kang completely, and you know give give Doom a chance. Doom, Norman Osborn, someone like that, someone that is 
that can be a massive threat, but also to your point, mm-hmm. it's not not Galactus level. Like we can have those, but we need to, we need some stuff in between, right? Like we built to right. Thanos. It wasn't just you know one movie and Thanos popped out. But um, mm-hmm. anyway, last piece of news. Um, so there was another rumor about the Amanda Waller show that was in development. There there was a rumor a few weeks ago. We I didn't report it here, but. Um, they said that it was being canceled due to budget issues. James Gunn also um, debunked that one as well. He said he said it's bullshit while they're still being written. So, which um, you know, this is one of those shows. I go, I don't know who's asking for this, but I am a little bit intrigued. I, I mean, Viola Davis I think plays an amazing Amanda Waller. It's probably the only reason I am really intrigued. Honestly, is her portrayal. Um, but right. I. I it kind of makes me think about Secret Invasion a little bit. And not that that was, you know, Nick Fury's starring role, but it was pretty much the closest to a starring role he's had in the MCU, right? And yep. Waller, to me, is a very similar character. Now, you know, she's more on the, um, walks the line more of a villain than Nick Fury, but trying to put together some team in the shadows, that type of stuff. And I just go, like... I, do you think that this character has enough depth for a show, and are you intrigued by this? I say yes, but I'm I'm on the fence a little bit. What about you? I think the Amanda Waller character has enough enough depth. However, um, like Nick Fury, I don't think that she should be a mainstream actor. Okay. I think that the character should pop in and out like a spy mm-hmm. does. Um. And by making a show out of them, you're going to make them like, like the Suicide Squad. They were supposedly an elite covert criminal yep. um, team that did stuff. When you start making a team, you know, you put them in the spotlight all the time. It takes the elite covert out of them, right. which kind of diffuses their power to me. So I don't think that they, sh- they should make a show about her. Uh, but definitely pop her in and out along with the other chick from uh, England. Mm-hmm. Um pop them in and out because that's what, that's what they do. They're spies. Right. They're covert deep three name, three letter agencies. Right. Mm-hmm. Um, and they should stay that way. Yeah. It, it's I, what, for me, it, it kind of removes a lot of the mystique from the character when you have to over explain. It's like, you know, we don't talk about star Wars much on here. Cause you know, it sucks for the most part now, <laughs> but, um, <laughs> No, it's not a comic book. Um, but with, with Solo, perfect example. Han Solo was a fan favorite for years. I mean, decades, mm-hmm. right? And then they they had that um, Solo movie, which by all means was not a bad movie, but it just goes mm-hmm. back to my original statement. Who's asking for this? Right. The the Part of the allure of that Han Solo character was the fact that you didn't really know his background. You knew he was mm-hmm. somewhat of a fugitive on the run type of guy he was a swindler like you know what i mean he was it was like um like 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 doc holiday in tombstone there was just this mystique about him right and then they go to explain everything that ever happened to him and for me it it, it kind of it, it just that character now loses some of its appeal in my opinion right you you, you explain too much it's like the wolverine P- part of what's really cool about wolverine is he doesn't 100 percent know his backstory you know he doesn't have all his memories he's trying to figure out and if everything was explained for me i think it loses some of that you know interest for me anyway so I, for that reason i i agree I, i'd much it has nothing to do with the character and nothing to do with the actress because i think viola davis is amazing but it you should i i would i would i shouldn't say should i wish they would keep them as a sideline that pops in and out like to your point you know she could be in every fucking movie i don't care she could be like like Samuel L. Jackson was early on. He she could be in every damn DC movie. I mean, at the rate they're going, their movies suck anyways. Maybe it actually would make them better, right? <laughs> you know, I say we can't say that. We do say that. So people say we're a little Marvel biased here, Adrian. Can you believe that? Uh, people accuse us of that. Uh, hey. <laughs> I don't know where to get that from. I don't know. It must be watching another show. <laughs> um, all right, so like we do every week at the end of our news segment, we're going to go recap the news and rumors and give them a thumbs up or a thumbs down. So starting with um, Marvel introducing a um, – creating Marvel's creating a character for the MCU. Um, there's a Native American character by the name of Kahori for the MCU. I give this a thumbs down because – I agree. I agree. Um, they don't. They don't need to 
create more, just expose what they the 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 hidden gems yep. that, that they already have. Absolutely. So for the same reason. Um, the Batman 2 villain rumors of Professor Pig and Clayface shot down by James Gunn. I give this a thumbs up because as much as it would be cool to see some of those characters, I, I don't want to see. I, I want this ba the Batman universe to stay grounded. I give it a thumbs up. What about you, dude? Um, I, I agree. Um, thumbs down. Got it. Um. Amanda Waller series. This series has not been canceled, so they're moving forward with the series. Um, as much as I was kind of giving it shit, I'm going to give this a thumbs up. I am kind of interested in seeing this. What about you? Well, interested in seeing it, sure. Um, do I think it's going to uh, dilute the character? Yes. Got it. So I, I'm, I'm going uh, to give it a thumbs down. Okay. Thumbs down from Adrian. Um, Aquaman and the Lost Kingdom seems to be the lost movie because no one went to go see it at the box office. It is, <laughs> it's tanking. Um, and I'm, I'm just going to give this a thumbs down because the, if they would have listened to us, Adrian, I told them not to put out this fucking movie. I told them not to do it. Right here on right. Only Comics, I said don't put it out. So I'm giving this a thumbs down. Um, I'm, I'm going to give it a thumbs down only because it's, it's obviously didn't pique my interest, interest, even though I, I like the portrayal of Jason Momo, mm -hmm. um, as Aquaman, he, he, it actually portrayed him, um, Aquaman as he should be the underwater version of Superman. Yep. Um, but clearly I've had zero interest in the second movie that I didn't even give it a thought. And matter of fact, I, it, it, it could have just existed somewhere and mm -hmm. I wouldn't even thought twice about it. Yeah. So thumbs down. I hear you. And then last piece of news, um, Captain America Brave New World rumor is that it's going to end with a big fight scene between Anthony Mackie's um, Falcon America, as we call him here in Only Comics, and um, Harrison right. Ford's um, Red Hulk. And I'm going to give that a thumbs down. Um, and also another part of this is the Beyonder rumored to be um, the main villain of Secret Wars. I'm giving that a thumbs down, too. What about you? Yeah, I agree. Thumbs down. Two thumbs down. Man, we uh, we are some Debbie Downers this week, AJ. I think we, we're almost thumbs right. down across the board, dude. So it is, hey, it is what it would bring in the new year right, you know? Uh, speaking right. of bringing in the new year right, Adrian, you have a segment here called Hidden Gem. And this is where um, most of you guys that are out there creating the movies that we talk about here every week, I wish you guys would tune in and listen to Adrian because you pick some of these obscure characters that, you know, Maybe less known than an Iron Man and characters like that, but these are characters that, some of them, but for the most part, the theme is always a character that could be used on screen in a movie, um, or it's a character that may have been on screen, but not been portrayed properly. Like, you've had Victor Von Doom on here, right? He's been on screen, but in a right. really shitty way. Um, you've had right. characters like Sunspot, who we've barely seen on screen, You've had Bishop. Uh -huh. um, you've had characters like Santa Claus. I mean, all kinds of great stuff. So um, this is right. your segment. I'm going to turn it over to you, Adrian. Who is our hidden gem for the week? All right. So the hidden gem for the week is, um, so <laughs> we're still in D.C. All um, right. You know, we 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 was in Christmas. Uh, we kind of did both for, for Christmas. But so we got a, a new D.C. character, not a new D.C. character, a, a character that's been around since the 70s. Um, a female character. Um, speaking of minority, a minority female superhero character. You're checking all and the this boxes. Week's character, right, right. Um, this week's character is a uh, vixen. Now we've seen her. Uh, we've seen her portrayed. Um, you know, we she's been in, you know, comics. She actually had her own initially. Then it was canceled. Um, she's been in. Um, a lot of the animation stuff, you know, on, on TV. Um, I think she was, she's been in live action, uh, like a show a couple of times. So she's been around, but the reason I chose her this week is because her power set is again, underrated. Um, and like most of these characters, these hidden gems, you know, she got started, then they kind of canceled her, canceled her for whatever reason, mostly political stuff or the fact that they wanted to, you know, pump up the other characters mm. but um so she is um <clears throat> from um you know in dc they they make up these 
these cities and towns and stuff. So it was like a fake uh, African town, right? Okay. Back at, back in the day, her parents were killed by you know uh, the father's brother, who turned out to be this tyrant. Um, but she was being passed down this amulet that was made by um, the a Nazi. Uh, that's a African um, like a mi- mythical fi- uh, figure. Yep. Um, this warrior Tantu asked him to make this amulet that would take on, that would give the wearer the powers of any animal on the planet, right? Um, prehistoric or current. And um, so he did. And basically, if you use it for good, um, then you can harness all the all the powers of any animal on the planet. Um, if you're not a good person, I guess, um, then you there's some kind of side effect. It's, it's not that you can't harness the powers, but it'll be like, you know, something beastly or monstrous or something like that. So in other words, not intended, not what it was intended for. Got it. So her parents were killed and she was, she got shot over to America, uh, raised by somebody else. You know, she became this supermodel back in the day. Um, so that's how, how she kind of made her money. Um, but so she was getting around. She had established her own self. And at some point, this amulet activated. And, you know, she realized and found all these powers and, you know, all this other kind of stuff. She eventually went back to her homeland um, and, was, and started seeking out because she had like a mental block and she forgot all this stuff. She got she forgot all this trauma. And she knew that her uncle killed her, her mother and her father, right? But she had blocked this stuff for years and went on to became this this supermodel. But anyway, all this stuff came back. And she used the amulet basically to get revenge against her uncle. Um, and then she just started popping around. You know, she was with the Suicide Squad for a minute, um, ultimately um, came in with the Justice League, but her powers were kind of unstable, right? And so they, she would tap into like the powers of like a Wolverine per se, not the not the character Wolverine, but an animal Wolverine. Yeah. And we're going to these berserker modes and stuff. So she couldn't completely control all this stuff. So at some point, because of that, she got kicked out of the Justice League. But then Batman brought her back in uh when he he jump started, re jump started the Justice League. Um what's fascinating to me about this character is it's like you know, Beast Boy, also DC, uh, of the Teen Titans. Yeah. You know, he get he gets all these little credits and stuff. He's all over the place. But this person who has so Beast Boy actually physically turns into an animal. Vixen harnesses the power, the strength, the speed of the animal. She doesn't well, in some sets, she has been able to turn into certain animals, wolves, things like that. But mostly she harnesses the power of, so she can fly. And it's also, um, I I forget the term, but so her powers are exponential, exponential. So for example, she can harness the the speed of like uh, some kind of fly or bee, but so she can fly like 800 or 500, um, five times faster than the speed of sound or something like that. Or her strength, um, she has the strength of like an ant, but exponentially it's 800 times. Um, she can lift 800 times her weight, you know, things like that. Yeah, yeah. So, um, she, she taps into this energy from the earth. So that's why she can, um, tap, uh, tap the powers of pretty much any animal <clears throat> alive, prehistoric or current. Now in some sets, she was able to tap into other people's powers like for one one time she started sapping off and sapping is the correct word because it's not like rogue who touches you and can duplicate your power actually it is kind of like rogue because rogue kind of taps your powers too it kind of she kind of drains your power away from you okay so she realized that with uh superman so at some point she was able to actually tap uh the powers of super characters right um and transform into animals um the question is whether or not she can do that on other planets because her powers are tied to um it's called a morphosphere or more some kind but it's magic but so it's tied directly to earth so if she goes into 
other planets, you know, it's questionable whether or not she would be able to duplicate the powers of, you know, other animals on other planets. But uh, the thing about it is, is that, you know, that's a lot of power. And I think it's severely, severely underrated, especially when you got somebody like the Beast Boy, you know, run around turning into elephants and snakes and birds and shit. <laughs> right. Um, so she's, but also she's not only is, is, does she have that power set, but she's also a very good combatant. You know, obviously she's made her own money, right? Yeah. Um, and, you know, she got to the point where even Batman, and you know how Batman is, Batman allowed her to uh, to take over the Justice League in his absence. Wow. And that's not, that's not, a, that's not something that he does casually. Mm. So, um, I, I think this person, even though she's been portrayed decently, you know, in the television series and, and film and stuff like that. Um, I, I, I think she's highly underrated. Um, and I, her power set is just unique. Um, definitely better than, you know, beast boy. And, um, but that's it for this week, you know, nice Vixen. Would Vixen beat the beast boy? Oh, absolutely. Absolutely. Because again, Beast Boy can change into things, and he has the power of those things. Yeah. But and, and also in, in Beast Boy's his his stuff is like more mutagenic. Her stuff is uh, magic. Yeah. Actually, her her claws are so hard, and because they're imbued with with magic, she's actually been able to cut into like Superman skin. Because remember. What are, what are Superman's uh, vulnerabilities besides being, uh, you know, a pussy? Um, <laughs> You're gonna upset some fans, Adrian. <laughs> um, you know, cry kryptonite. Yep. In in all its various forms and magic, magic, right? Which we saw with Black Adam. Right. So she she was able to tear into his skin because, um, you know, his stuff is magic. Yeah. I mean, because Vixen's power source is magic. So, so that... I think she's pretty badass. Um, but I, I, I think a lot of this stuff, I, I think one of the reasons that she was like, kind of like cast out, um, because they do the stereotypical stuff. Mm -hmm. I'm pausing because I'm looking at deer running through the woods and stuff. <laughs> but, uh, but, um, I, I think she was, she was cast out because, you know, for whatever reason, you know, budget cuts yeah. and all this other kind of stuff, but also they do like a lot of stereotypical with the uh, minority stuff. Like right. they did with uh, Bishop. Like, yep. for example, did you? Uh, I, I didn't mention this, but Bishop, he, remember um, Professor X? The He was with this chick from Shire. Um, I forget her name. She was like the oh, queen. Oh, yeah, Lalan Lalandra or something like L that. L L L Lalandra. But her sister, w who was Blackbird, right, hooked up with Bishop, and they had a child. Okay. And she that that child is her name is I forget her name but she's she's in the comic somewhere, but they did they do the stereotypical stuff like with, uh, with Bishop you know they did the stereotypical black male thing yep. hooked up with a woman had the child and then left and never came back. Got it. With her, you know, um, she was you know mentally unstable and what do, what does the man always do? Well, what we gave you we can take back. So she lost her powers at some point. Got it. They, they they took the medallion back, and then at some point she got it back. So I I don't like how they do this stereotypical stuff. Uh, what was the chick on um the Marvels with the with the grill? Oh yeah, the Darben. <laughs> yeah, I mean they do stereotypical shit like that that pisses people off. Right. But you know, but they besides the fact that they also underrate them, they make these super powerful people, and then they put them in a the trunk somewhere mm -hmm. where nobody can see them. So, yeah. and, but and I was reading to Vi Vixen's been in some animated films, animated um, series, and even some um, yeah animated movies and films for DC, right? So I, oh, I didn't yeah. even realize that. But um, but now has she ever been in live action? Was she in some maybe some live action TV show? Am I reading that right? Um, let me see. Something in the Arrowverse, well, they, maybe. Yeah, yeah. Um, they did a, a incarnation of her vamp or something. Um, That's Christ of Two Earth. Um, <clears throat> she was in Justice League, superheroes and huntsmen. Um, Green Lantern. She was in. She's been in that. 
Got so it. she's been around even video games, you know, she's been into. So yeah. she's, she's been around. It's like, it's not like the character hasn't been around, but I don't think that she's had the prominence um, that she deserved. Like, for example, she's definitely more interested in than let's say the black Falcon. Right. Yeah. I mean, uh, yeah. The Falcon. Well, I what the black Falcon. <laughs> Falcon America. We're calling him. <laughs> but, He's definitely more interesting than characters like that. Um and, and most most of the characters that they bring in out. So Yeah. Hidden Gem, Vixen. There you go. Well, good work, dude. Another great hidden gem. Now, the, not, no pun intended, but the magic question, Adrian. This question's been upsetting a lot of us. Would she beat Black online. Adam? No, would she beat <laughs> Superman? <laughs> um I I <clears throat> I think that she has the aptitude. I think that she has the power set. Um, the magic gives her an advantage. Um, I don't think that she could all in all, all in out beat Superman. Yeah. But I think she could definitely give him a run for his money. Got it. For for, for reasons other than just the super strength, because you know Superman with the speed, you know right. he can just whip around her in you know a fraction of a second, break her so. neck. You know, but then on her side, she does have the magic, and she's killed before, so she she's she has that aptitude to kill, which he does not. Yeah. So there you go, and that's a point. You know, so great hidden gem. Um, and if you like this hidden gem, check out the hidden gem playlist on YouTube for weeks um, upon weeks of other great hidden gems. But we made a statement a few weeks ago here, Adrian, about um, Superman. And the X Men versus Justice League, right? And and you and I said that hey, X Men would destroy the Justice League, right? And yep. then there's yep. been a lot of comments online. There's a lot of people that agree with us. I think the majority agree mm -hmm. with us, but there's a, I like to call it a vocal minority online, right? It means that, that the smaller, <laughs> but they're very, they're a lot more vocal than the ones who agree. The ones who agree just like like the post, thumbs up, right? There's a lot more of that, but there has been a lot of comments from people that, and. A lot of their their um, their rebuttals to our statement is just that the fact that you know Superman and Flash are so fast that he would just heat laser Xavier and kill him and he'd smash this one into them and all this crazy shit and I'm going, dude. At the end of the day, what when when has Superman been a murderous killer? When does that ever happen? He's not right. And that's the statement you kind of just made. Like he's too much of a of a pussy to, to and that that also plays into this hypothetical battle. Like, dude. Wolverine will kill people. He don't give a shit. Marvel right. heroes, for the most part, they don't have a lot of the same moral, um, you know, dilemmas as DC heroes. I mean, you right. watch, you watch a Mar uh, one of my favorites is Captain America: Winter Soldier. Remember that scene when he's running down the ship and he's he's you know throwing his shield off of people, knocking people into the damn Atlantic Ocean, bro. No one's coming right. to save those cats. They're dead. <laughs> like. Captain America exactly, killed like thirty. Exactly. Like, yeah, he killed like thirty-seven people in that five-minute scene. So, at, you know, X Men fighting Justice League. That one, the the advantage, the biggest advantage the X Men have is they will kill. <laughs> Justice League seems right. to have this moral dilemma where they try to avoid that at all costs. So th this idea that Superman's just going to come in with his you know heat sinking eyes and just zap everyone to death. He's not done that. It's not going to happen. Wolverine cutting someone's head off is very plausible. <laughs> Wolverine right, shoving his right. claws through your throat and coming out the back of your neck is very plausible. We've seen him do it a That's dozen right. times. So, not that I right. needed to um, solidify our, um, you know, our points even more. But you know, every once in a while, Adrian, you need to slap them around a little bit. They don't, they don't act right <laughs> online, you know. Uh, but it's all in good fun. So for any of y'all, there are a few that get very upset. It's like, dude, it's it's just. It's relaxed. We're talking about made up character. You know who would really win? There's a real answer. Whoever the writers wanted to win. <laughs> exactly. I mean, it's kryptonite and magic for a reason, right? Because when they need Superman to lose, <laughs> he loses. You know? Um, so anyway. But great hidden gem, dude. Now we have agree to disagree, Adrian. This is where I rapid fire 10. These are my opinions. Um, mm -hmm. some of these may even be predictions, but this is all just what I think at the moment. At, and, and I think the key is at the moment, because next week I could change completely. You could change, right? We're, we're not, we don't have our heels. Right. It's part of this. The fun about this show is we don't take ourselves that seriously. So if you do, you probably want to find a different podcast. Um, right. All right. So are you ready? I'm ready. All right. I'm going to rapid fire these. You're going to let us know if you agree or disagree. So Aquaman 2 will not beat the Marvels at the box office. Agreed. Kingpin is the perfect villain for the next Spider-Man film. Agreed. 
When Beyond the Spider-Verse is released, it will be the greatest Spider-Man movie of all time. Agree. Oh, yeah, yeah, think about that one. Um, well, yeah, yeah, I had to think about that one. Yeah, I mean, there's some there's some good Spider-Man movies. I mean, you know, yeah, oh, yeah. No Way, and, and actually, when I was writing that down, I was going back and forth between No Way Home, and I love No Way Home, but I do mm-hmm. think... Um, that across the Spider Verse, well, actually, you know what? Let me let me shut up because I'm spoiling my next one. Across the Spider Verse <laughs> is currently the greatest Spider Man movie of all time. Agreed. And that's one. That's where I was going back and forth because No Way Home is a may. I mean, it's probably number two, right? Like it's a great yep. movie. But I just think Across the Spider Verse just has so much more depth to it with the whole, you know, him worrying him, him being caught at the end. I mean, I can go on forever, but I, I um, you agree? So you guys let us know if y'all agree. Um, number five, Doom should be the next MCU main villain. Absolutely. The Martha moment in Batman vs Superman is one of the dumbest comic book movie <laughs> moments of all time. <laughs> I won't say it's the dumbest. I, I, I disagree with that because there's some other dumb shit okay. going on. All right. So you just, you know, what? I'm, I'm going to challenge you then. So it, you next it's week, dumb. It, I'm also, oh, it's dumb. But and also because I love dumb shit, so I challenge you, Adrian. Next week, you give me one moment that you think is dumber than um the Martha moment. And I'm sure they're out there, but got it. Got um, it. HBO Titans is better than just about every DCEU film. Agreed. I mean, I was thinking about honestly. Can you name a movie they've put out since? I mean, we're talking DCEU, so we're not talking the Nolan Dark Knight movies. Mm-hmm. Can you name a movie that you would say is better than that show? And I I don't know, dude. I mean, I'm not going to say the Snyder Cut because that's just Justice League but very slow. You know, it's right. it's a slow-mo fest. Um, I, I don't I, – I can't think of one. No, uh, the, the Titans is, is a gritty – it's not, you know, shot in somebody's garage dark, but right. it's dark, dark, moody dark. Mm-hmm. Um, and Nightwing, the Nightwing portrayal is great. Yep. Um, they they get into some blood and guts in there, and I like that. Yeah, and I like the the mature psychological aspect of the like you get to see what you think. You know, they dig into the psyche and, and the the trauma of Batman taking in someone like a Robin at a young age, and and the way mm-hmm. he disciplined the, the lack of love at times how hardcore batman was and you see the impact on that at, you know at, to an adult which i think is a different side of comics that we don't really see and as much as people say we beat up dc here but that's why because they have great mm-hmm. comic stories they just fucking don't do anything with them most of the time right right you know and the uh the the hawk and dove uh oh, sex scene right right before he's like you know having sex with the dude right before he's about to get his about, about to blow up yep you know that was cool. Yeah, I mean that's 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 why comic books aren't necessarily for kids. I mean that's why I right. don't feel like the whole Disney connection because Disney is more wholesome kids stuff. Yep. And DC, I mean, uh, not DC, but comic books in general, that, that that's adult stuff. Right. You know, it's adult or R-rated or better um, yep. content. And you know, trying to dumb it down and make it, you know, um, the Little Mermaid is just not right. Not gonna work. And I mean, it, it 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 we've they've kind of proven our point because m- some of the better comic content has been the rated MA or the R rate. Like I mean, you talk about Logan, right. Deadpool one and two, the whole Daredevil, you know that series on Netflix. That's right. TVMA. Um, mm-hmm. Even now they're coming out with this Echo series in about a week, so we'll actually have that to actually two weeks. We'll have that to review coming up. But um, mm-hmm. that so think about think about this shit, dude. Comics are made for adults. A lot of them, right. in our you know mm-hmm. opinions, Disney takes over this show. Echo, you have to go into your Disney Plus settings and change a feature to allow mature content to even watch the show. Like, is that crazy? Right. Like, dude, and, and it's just a comic book show. It's Echo. Like, it's and I think it's going right. to be great. I mean, mm-hmm. um, I'm actually I'm I'm way more hyped for that than I was for Secret Invasion. I'll tell you that. Um, but right. yeah, it's oh, just yeah. crazy. So anyway, we got a little sidetrack here on Only Comics. So I got right. a few more, Adrian. All right, number yep. eight, Magneto is a better X Men leader than Xavier. Agree. Wow. New Year's resolutions are stupid. If you're gonna get better, just get better. Don't wait for January first. Oh, absolutely agree. 
And last one, Only Comics is the only comic podcast you need. That's true. That I is agree. true. <laughs> I agree with that even more. I'm doubling down. <laughs> well, there you have it, Unagree to Disagree. Here's where the real fun starts. You guys let us know if you agree or disagree. And if you don't, can you be mature and agree to disagree? You know? I mean, don't don't exactly. take it personal. It's not that we if we don't like the same character, it's not that we don't like you. You're probably a great person, dude. We probably we probably love you. But mm -hmm. just don't get too butthurt about it online, dude. Or if you do, there's Destin for that. <laughs> so, um, next wow. up. Yeah, I mean, what are you gonna do, bro? King of the comic movies, and this is what we're gonna wrap with. So we are on our semifinals. So if you've been with us for the past few weeks, um, we've been going through the the multiverse of comic book movies and we've been going back and forth and deciding um you know who who has the better movie of the two so mm -hmm. you know what i'm gonna do um i'm gonna go through this week and and if we don't agree what happens adrian we flip a coin so That's um right. i am up the first battle we have is avengers okay the number the first avengers movies versus captain america civil war now this one um Two great movies, and I and I think every mm -hmm. battle this week, or just about, is going to be you know one of these kind of nail biters because they're both great for for different reasons. Mm -hmm. um, I mean, the first Avengers we talked about that it's the first time you saw multiple. Um, I mean, this is really the first connected universe on screen, right? And then all these mm -hmm. comic characters in one movie. Everyone said it couldn't be done. They knocked it out of the park. But dude, Civil War kind of took that um, challenge, if you will, and double down on it. I mean, there's all kinds of characters in this movie. They introduced the thing about the, you know, in hindsight, looking back, they introduced Spider-Man who is arguably today, probably the most popular comic character. I mean, one or two, right. And then right. black Panther who at the time was someone, I put him in that Iron Man boat. He had mm -hmm. a fan base. He was not, you know, Batman level, not not everyone knew about him, but I think they, you know, Chadwick um, Boseman's portrayal and just the writing behind the character and the MCU made him, you know, a A-lister, a right? But they introduced right. Spider-Man. They introduced Black Panther. They introduced a conflict between all the Avengers. I mean, uh, Tony, Cap, they're, like, starring in this. Bucky as kind of like an anti-hero villain. They had Baron Zemo in this. I mean... The crossbones was in the beginning of the movie. This was a big, big movie. I'm gonna go Civil War over Avengers by like, you know, by 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 a few points. Where, what are you picking? I agree with you with, for all of those reasons. Okay. So Civil War moves on. Um, Infinity War versus Logan. Dude, two, another two of my favorite or, or two more of my favorite movies. Mm -hmm. Um. This one's tough. I mean, Infinity War, both of these movies had emotion behind them. I mean, Infinity War, that was Marvel's almost Empire Strikes Back at the time, right? I mean, it ended mm -hmm. with the snap, something that, I mean, it was very shocking at the time because Marvel has, especially with Disney, I mean, they've, how many characters die and come back and no one's really gone. And, and for them to, even though it, you know, obviously they're going to put everything back together in Endgame for the most part. But, dude, for over a year, they killed off half of their characters. I think that's a very mm -hmm. uh, very bold move, right? And then Logan just being the, the culmination of that version of Wolverine, right? I know Hugh Jackman's coming back for Deadpool, but it's going to be a variant. They're not undoing this. So that was a big one of the first rated R movies, um, Wolverine's first rated R movie. We got first time we saw the Berserker Rage on screen, legit, like that scene in the woods. Mm -hmm. Um, mm -hmm. we, we saw the, I mean, Wolverine has a soft side to him. This is what's pro what makes him part of why he's so intriguing as a character. You know, he's this badass dude that would, you know, kill whoever fucks with him. But at the same time, he has a soft spot for f certain individuals, right? We've seen it with Gene. Right. We've seen it with Jubilee. Um, in the, the Fox movies, they kind of use Rogue as that character. But we see it with, mm -hmm. with Laura or X-23 in this one. This is a tough one, dude. Um... I think I'm gonna go. I'm gonna go Infinity War. By I, I go ahead. Go ahead. I was gonna say Infinity War too. Uh, just because, like you said, this this is like uh, it, it's just so epic. Mm -hmm. uh, the, the scale of things. Wolverine, great movie. Uh, but you know, definitely Civil War. 
Yep, Infinity War, you mean? I mean Infinity War. And then on the other side of our bracket, we have the Batman, Robert Pattinson's mm-hmm. version, up against 300. And, dude, I think 300's a great movie. Visually, it's probably one of the coolest-looking comic movies. Um, but mm-hmm. um, the Batman, I mean, at being, you know, Batman's my number one guy, and that was, I love that portrayal. It was the first time we really saw... Like, it was the most Batman we've ever seen on screen. A lot of times in these Batman movies, you see him in a few scenes, and it's minimal dialogue, and it's just fight scenes. Um, Mm -hmm. And I love that movie for several reasons. I love Gotham in that movie. I I love the way it looks. Um, I love the detective story throughout. It really feels like some of my favorite um, Batman comics. I am going the Batman over 300. Uh, Yeah, no, 300. All right. We have have to get the coin, Adrian. Yep, do it. And dude, this is um real, real. I'm here my, by myself, so I have to get up to get the coin because my dumbass forgot to get it. So <laughs> you go ahead and let everyone know why you're picking 300 while I grab our coin to flip. All right, so we we've seen just like we've seen, you know, um both the Marthas, the the Uncle Ben's, the the Daddy Wayne, and you know all these people. Um, you know, resurrected for one reason or another over and over and over again. Um, 300 was, you know, original. It was original in cinematography. Mm. Matter of fact, in, in um, Photoshop and in uh, other cinematic, uh, they took that cinematic filtering view that 300 basically created, and they're using that in all kinds of stuff. It also, you know, also the history. You know, it was, you know, pretty much the birth, I forget the name of the place that they were, but that was the birth of democracy, um, according to some historians, right? Mm. Um, but that was just a kick-ass movie. Um, you know, the the whole Sparta scene with the well, um, the you know, the beach scene um, when they had him in that little thing. And then the treachery of the dude, you know, he didn't understand, like, you can't be a warrior, so you're going to be- betray your whole people. Mm. It's like I said before, you know, you had like a little comic book in it where, you know, you have somebody, they, they were butt hurt, so they want to destroy the whole universe. Yeah, and that's what the, the hump. <laughs> yeah, that's, that's what the humpback dude did. It's like, he and he told him, hey, lift this, this spear, lift this, this shield. He couldn't do it. He said, you can't be a warrior for those reasons. Right. You know, and, and then he went and betrayed his, his entire people, you know, for because he got butt hurt. So I, 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 th- I think 300 was a was a you know cinematography wise it was you know pretty epic game changing um and batman was just another evolution of that to me got it all right well we're gonna flip you're gonna call it in the air you're on a hot streak yep. now right because there was one week you went like oh for six but last week you were cleaning house so we'll, we'll see what happens call it in the air adrian yep tails heads look at that oh Oh, yeah. And and I know you're not here, but I'm not going to cheat. All right. It's Scout's honor. (laughs) So the Batman beats 300 by a coin toss. And now the last battle for the week, Adrian. We talked about these movies a little bit here today. Spider-Man Into the Spider-Verse. That's the first one. Second one up against Spider-Man Across the Spider-Verse. I love both of these, but I'm going hands down Across the Spider-Verse. The second one's way better than the first. I, I agree. I agree. And I say way better, but do the I mean the first one is uh, is amazing, um, mm-hmm. and I think it it redefined. I mean, to your point, almost a lot of things you said about three hundred, you could say about across the Spider Verse on the animated side, like that style, that comic book style, the the you know slower frame rate at times, almost looks stop mm-hmm. action, um, and, and it's a blend of you know it looks like your it looks like a comic book came to life, like an actual book mm-hmm. came to life, right? And we saw right. that um, in Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles, Mutant Mayhem, very similar. Like, you can't tell me that that they didn't draw some inspiration from the Spider-Verse in a good way. And I would, I, I hope we see more stuff like this. Like, instead of just taking a character and making, you know, your basic animated movie, I like the style behind this. I, I, I like that it, the movie style almost has its own idea. It's almost like its own character in a way. It's so... You know, um, it's so big. So it started with, you know, Into the Spider-Verse. 
And then across the Spider Verse, everything they did in Into the Spider Verse, they literally dialed. They took the dial and turned it up to eleven on all of you know everything right. that worked, right? Um, right. So, dude, I, I I love both movies, but I definitely picked the second one over. But again, I, I again, you can echo a lot of the stuff you said. They it redefined what you can do in these animated movies, and I'd love to see more of this across other characters. Like, dude, I'd love to see a a Batman animated movie in a style like you know. Not matching the Across the Spider-Verse style, but something in that realm. You know, same thing with Iron Man. I'd love to see an Iron Man film where they're doing a lot more with the animation. Um, So I I, I love it, dude, out of the the two. And I'm, you know, beyond hype for the third one. Yeah. Well, they they have done something with Iron Man, like uh, the Technovore thing. Um, They did uh, like a Japanese animation kind of movie. So that was pretty cool. Um, But when you have something like uh, Spider-Man into the universe and uh, across the universe, when you start comparing animation, I mean, this thing, the uh, into the uh, spider, into the spider verse won an Academy award. Right. Right. So when you start having animated movies being compared, not even compared at the same level as live action, mm-hmm. that's when you know that you've done something extraordinary. Right. right? It's, it's almost kind of like, you know the reason they they keep bringing up you know who do we replace uh king with mm. because jonathan majors knocked that character out of the park right so they so that means that he did such a good job they trying to they're not just moving him out of the way the king character um the jonathan majors king character they, they're not just moving him out of the way they're trying to find a replacement for him which means that he has spun that character to a level that they now feel that they need to either bring somebody out on that same level or supersede him. That's when you know that, you know, the work has been put in and that character is going to stick around for a long time. So Jonathan Majors playing King and Spider-Man into the universe um, being compared to live action films. Those are kind of, um, um, kind of like once in a lifetime kind of thing. Yeah. Um they they're polarizing. They're uh they 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 change the movie industry kind of person. And we should definitely see a lot more of that. Yeah. Absolutely. I I agreed and um you know, I I think that's one of the the things I love about comic movies is I think in general, I mean comic books in general have they they've changed a lot in in each industry. I mean, comics were what just like stupid um funny strips in newspapers at one point, right? That became right, actual right. comic books. And then even like the movies, when they first um, were released, you know, in the in, back in the 70s, I mean, you yeah, had the Superman movies, but a lot of them for the most part were looked at as jokes. They weren't looked at right. as, um, you know- Serious they, film. Yeah, they, they, they weren't on the same level. It's almost like it, they were treated the same way hip hop was treated at the Grammys for so many years, right? Like we're right. gonna give the hip hop awards before the show. <laughs> like, no, oh, you can't exactly. come to the show. No, that's reserved for all the rock and roll, the country guys. You're you're a hip hop right. artist. We'll give it to you on the pre-show. And then now, I mean, you you watch the Grammys and they dominate. I mean, this past year with the hip hop's 50th anniversary, they dominated all these award shows. Like, funny how the tables have turned, right? Um, yep. But I think the same thing has happened with a lot of these comic book movies. Do they they have changed the industry? I mean. You know, you mentioned some of them be, um, uh, you know, up for Academy Awards, like The Dark Knight. I mean, Heath Ledger won a posthumous um, uh, Academy Award for that. It was one of the first comic movies right. to be recognized on that same level. And I, and I, mm-hmm. I, I hope that, you know, I, I think they've done enough to almost remove that term comic movie. It should just be looked at as a movie because Correct. there are stories in these comic movies that are better than, you know, most other movies that come, you know, w- when you hear shit like your boy Martin Scorsese saying that, you know, Marvel movies are just like a amusement park. Like, dude, listen, I love a lot of Scorsese films, but I also love a mm-hmm. lot of Marvel movies. I love some, Absolutely. I want to say a lot. I love some DC movies, you know, but right. they, there are some movies that I look at, like, you know, mm-hmm. the dark Knight. I love that movie as a movie. Mm-hmm. I don't, that's right. not even one of my favorite comic movies anymore. It is one of my favorite movies though. Like right. I, I look at, you know, and, and for me, the Batman portrayal by Robert Pattinson has superseded the Christian Bale for me. I know you don't agree, mm-hmm. but um, mm-hmm. but as a movie in general, that's just a good movie. I mean, mm-hmm. we talked about Winter Soldier. Dude, that's a great spy thriller, regardless of the comic book aspect. 
there, right. there's so many movie. I mean, Logan, we talked about these Spider Verse movies, even the damn Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtle movie. There's a lot of beats that they hit in those movies that they talk about shit that you don't see in other movies. Um, you know, they talk about their social issues that they can talk about. There's all kinds of like, you know, real life shit that they talk about in a way where they make it fun, they make it entertaining. But I, I mm -hmm. do think as a whole, dude, comics has changed um, every industry it's touched. And here we are changing the podcast industry, Adrian, with our podcast in the comic world. <laughs> there, um, there you go. There you go. That's how that works. You know, you know what um what we should do? I, I think we, we loosely discuss this, but we these tournaments have been fun, right? We had the, the character mm -hmm. tournament first, and we got the movie one. And I, I think the next one we do movie moments. I think that would, first of all, lead to some very interesting conversation because – there's movies, there's shitty movies that have one great moment, right? There's some movies You're that right. have a badass opening scene. You're like, man, it's going to yep. be fucking awesome. And then you get halfway yep. through and you're like, God, this sucks, you know? Um, <laughs> speaking of, you know what? I I, I, I tried rewatching Blue Beetle recently, Adrian, and it's it's what I think it starts off really strong. And then once mm -hmm. he gets the, the Beetle and once the family all of a sudden turns into tech geniuses and it, it kind of goes off the rails. So that's one for me. I'm like, it has some moment. Even, mm -hmm. I mean, dude, I'm sure I could find a, I don't know, maybe it's a stretch. I'll say maybe I could find a good movie, uh, moment from The Flash, but I don't know. <laughs> uh, the only movie, movie moment from The Flash would be him, you know, you know, trying to eat some food while trying to put, <laughs> shove a baby into a microwave. In a microwave. <laughs> Greatest movie moment so, of all time. <laughs> all right, so you, you said movie moment, not good movie moment. Yeah, true, true. Dude, we that could be another one. I mean, we talked about the Martha moment, and you're gonna you're gonna let us know about an even dumber moment next week, maybe. We right. Could have That's a, it. a tournament of dumb movie moments, you know. Um, yep. But all in all, I mean, you know, co comics. It, we're only comics. This is where we discuss comics and only comics, but sometimes some other stuff. But I mean, all jokes aside, the whole reason we do this show is is our love for comics, and it has redefined many industries. And I just look forward to to what it um, has to offer. You know, this new year moving forward. Um, mm -hmm. you know, we're, you're going to hear and see more of us cause we ain't going anywhere. Uh, this started as kind of a joke, right. Between a few of us and right. it's turned into a, um, I think a lot of fun each week. Um, it doesn't feel like work. So as long as it doesn't feel like work, you're going to keep seeing us on your channel every single week. So if you like what you saw today, hit the subscribe button. Um, and Adrian, man, appreciate you uh, joining me, even though you're on your, um, I want to say a sabbatical, you're on a, a little, little family getaway. So I appreciate you carving yep, out yep. some time and and check it in with us today and we will have um we back to our regular show next week um and this i think it's a great way to kick off the um the the you know the new year so if you've not subscribed yet what the fuck are you waiting for do it please god for love of god um but now we appreciate you guys checking in and adrian thanks thanks for checking in from your vacay bro all right man no problem all right we will see you next week on only comics